And welcome back everyone to Speed Gaming. We are here with another race in the spoiler tournament. Uh, I am Cool Papa Bell 2282 commentating for you today. Uh, Ricky of Kakiri will be along in just a few minutes. It's a little bit early morning for uh, us here in the States. Uh, so uh, we'll uh, have the full commentary team in, uh, in just a few minutes. And uh, Mia Lee is uh, doing the tracking for us uh in the background and we have a race up between christos owen and the daddy gamers so these uh two racers have been uh studying their spoiler log uh for this particular seed for 15 minutes and that gives them some time to plan out their route and then they can continue looking at that spoiler log as the rest of the race goes on they can always refer back to it as necessary to find any items that they might have missed out on uh this is definitely a really fun mode to watch things go really quickly once the runners get started um and uh it really comes down to some heavy execution uh between the runners as you sort of try and find your path through the seed that will get you through as low percent as possible uh to not waste any time picking up extraneous items and from the srl it looks like our runners will be getting started in just a few seconds Uh, yes, the runners do know where all of the items are. They have a spoiler log which lists them all out in text format. Uh, and just so the runners uh, know about the, or the the chat knows about the rules of all of this, uh, you cannot use any sort of automated text parsing or anything like that uh, to help analyze the seed. You can use uh, Control F in Notepad, and that is about it uh, to find where all the items are that you're looking for. So we are getting started right now. Daddy Gamers starting off in Sanctuary. And uh, Christos Owen going to Link's house, a uh, full heart container for both of them. So some divergence already, Christos Owen routing up toward Uncle. Uh, might be trying to get some things uh, from a tree pole or headed into front of escape right away. Whereas Daddy Gamer is making a little bit more standard play of Kakariko, there's bound to be some good items here, so uh, not too surprising to see him heading in that direction. Ten bombs off of Uncle. Ooh, and Boots immediately in the well. That's uh, definitely a good reason to head there as quickly as possible. And it looks like Christos Owen is going to take those ten bombs and head directly into Escape. Also, the seed being fairly nice so far, a couple of hearts right along our runner's path. Uh, you always want to sort of collect as many safeties as you can uh, quickly, um, but uh, it's uh, sometimes a little bit uncertain just how many uh, of those safety items the seed is going to put in your path so that you can do those quickly. Oh, Chris is so showing off some really nice bomb escape strats there. And is going to go even a little bit deeper into the front of escape as Daddy Gamers picks up the lamp out of the library. Daddy Gamer is just grabbing the well and headed to the race game as Christos Owen finds our first sword. Uh, Daddy Gamers finds his first sword. Uh, so both of our runners picking up the uh, their first sword very quickly in the seed. Uh, 
Callisto's Owen with a save and quit back to Link's house. Going to head towards South Shore as Daddy Gamers is now headed into front of Escape as well. Will not have to rely on bomb strats, just using that sword that he's got. And just one of those things about a spoiler tournament, Christos Owen uh, might not be going back in for that chest inside the dam. Uh, if it's... Oh, no, is going to go back in. We'll see what that is. But finds a bow outside in the sunken treasure as Daddy Gamers is following Christos Owen's path into front of escape. Ooh, finds the cape uh, in the dam. Uh, we have a couple of swords, a cape, and a lamp already. Um, that, that smells like Agonim. Daddy Gamer is picking up his second sword out of escape as well. Flippers in the Ice Rod Cave for Christos Owen as Daddy Gamer is uh, following in his uh, footsteps a little bit. Headed towards South Shore as well. Yeah, good point in chat that uh, Master Sword would also get us into Aghanim, so Cape wouldn't really be required for that. It also might just be one of those safeties that is, uh, if it's readily available, uh, why not grab it? Uh, depending on what your Aga fight is going to look like, those sorts of considerations that our runners are thinking about all the time. Yes, Bumper Ledge being the other big reason why you might want that cape. And yeah, Daddy Gamers is definitely getting some good use out of those boots right away. Christos Owen picking up the hammer off of Hobo. So that uh, increases our chances that we might be avoiding that Aga play. Daddy Gamers using his last bomb to get into Ice Rod Cave and uh, grab those flippers. And yeah, question in chat about the timers. Uh, Daddy Gamers just included his 15 minute study period in his timer. Um, so they are uh, basically running in sync. Just a uh, difference in how they set up their timers. And it looks like our runners are continuing with those flippers checks. Daddy Gamer is getting more use out of those boots, setting up a water walk coming out of uh, Ice Rod Cave, which will let him just dash across the water and get to Hobo a bit faster. Hook shot in the uh, Waterfall Fairy Cave. Always a good pickup. And has a bottle as well, so Sick Kid will now be available uh, when he heads into Kakariko, uh, if there's anything interesting there. So that might explain why Christo Owen wanted to put off uh, all of those Kakariko checks, including those boots, uh, if he really wanted to have a bottle while he was in the area.
So very similar route so far from the Daddy Gamers. Just haven't gone to Kakariko for those boots first. Um, and we will see if he's also interested in whatever that bottle unlocks on Sick Kid. Uh, we are short a glove to be able to get to Death Mountain right now. So that hookshot is maybe pointing toward uh, hookshotting across the river after beating Aghanim. And Christos Owen is going into Blind's Hut, which TDG skipped uh, on his first trip into Kakariko. Oh, another sword. And TDG is going to show us this sick kid item first. Oh, the flute! Wow, so... Uh, Flute on Sick Kid is a pretty convenient location. Our runners can uh, get that activated right away. So Christos is routing with uh, putting off the boots. Uh, doesn't seem to have cost him too much because our runners are activating the flute at basically the same time. Although Daddy Gamers is going to have the uh, this third sword, it looks like, out of Blind's Hut. And oh, Christos is maybe going to head down to Race Game and pick up his third sword uh, from down there as well. So uh, our runners will have done pretty much the same checks at this point, just in a slightly different order. Uh, and we will see where they go next. Uh, that flute, you have to think they're going to head up the mountain now uh, with hammer and hookshot. That odds are there is something good up there. So yeah, a bit of a lead for Daddy Gamers getting up Death Mountain, uh, about 15-20 seconds or so. So it looks like the early boots did win out by just a little bit in the end. Uh, this is such a hard thing in spoiler races. 15 minutes seems like a lot of time, but there's a lot of text in that log. Um, and you kind of just have to go with your gut instinct of, I think this is going to be faster, I'm going to do it this way. Um, and uh, it's, it's really hard to parse out exactly what is going to be faster when it comes to small routing decisions like that one, uh, especially when it turned out to be such a, uh, a minor difference between the two. Uh, Daddy Gamer is a little bit scary there, down to just one heart. Uh, if you can get past these Tektites, uh, he'll uh, be able to pick up a couple of hearts in Paradox Cave. Just gets that sword in on that uh, that dead rock there. Oh, Daddy Gamers has uh, no bombs. Oh, so he will not be able to pick up those hearts before going up to those uh, honestly really scary mini Moldorms up here. Um, went ahead and drank his red potion to get those sword beams. Uh, understandable. Uh, I guess could have also used the ice rod to hit that switch and get across, but uh, maybe once the health as well. Uh, and picks up Moon Pearl and a Quake Medallion there in uh, Mini Moldorm Cave. And both of our runners saving and quitting back to the house. Oh, and they're headed back to Hyrule Castle. This might be that Aga play. Yep, pretty much no other reason why they wouldn't have uh, done the rest of Escape while they were here the first time, so Aghanim it is. Yeah, I think Daddy Gamers was thinking about his uh, missing bomb, uh, and that's another one of those things that really catches you off guard when you start playing spoiler races. Uh, in my race the other day, I got into Eastern Palace with zero arrows and didn't stop to pick any up. Uh, because if you're opening every chest that you see, you just get spare bombs and spare arrows all over the place. Um, whereas in a spoiler log, that just doesn't happen. So you can really be caught off guard by those things. 
So both of our runners into Aghanim 2 at about the same time. Daddy Game is just a couple of rooms behind. So yeah, given that our runners got Hammer and Moon Pearl early on, uh, it looks like Glove was not accessible to them early on, or that maybe there is something uh, important on the Lumberjack that is going to force us to do Aga anyway. And Christos really executing nicely through this uh, Aghanim's Tower climb. This is not quite the uh, NMG escape. A little bit easier with Tempered Sword. Or, sorry, NMG Aghanim. And we are joined in the booth by our co-commentator, Ricky of Kokiri. Hello, uh, hello. Welcome, Ricky. How's it going? It's going well. I see we're in Aga Tower. Yeah, our runners did uh, some uh, quick cleanup. Uh, got a flute, took a quick trip to Death Mountain, and then we are doing Aghanim. So uh, apparently gloves were not on the menu in the light world. Oh, fun. I presume the timers, um, Daddy Gamers, is including the spoiler log study, and Christus Owen is not? Uh, yes, that is correct. Okay. So this is the uh, best guessing game we have for uh, spoiler log race. If you have any guesses about how many blue balls Aghanim is going to throw at us, it could be anywhere from 0 to 15, well now from 1 to 15. Alright, three so far. Oh, fine. <laughs> Oh no, this better not be a one good shot per phase. <laughs> you know, I've always wanted to see a 15 blue ball Aghanim, and I would be much happier if it happened to someone else, so I'm all for it. So uh, Paradox Cave had the Moon Pearl and uh, Quake Medallion for us, which Quake is required for uh, Turtle Rock, so... drawing this out as long as he can. So I think we're at max 11 right now. Up to 9? <laughs> there we go! Wow. Whew, 9 blue balls, oh my goodness. All right, so uh, Christos Owen is our first runner into the Dark World. Uh, definitely has some options. That hookshot can get us across the river over to West Dark World. Uh, we do have Hammer and Bow. Ooh, Kane on the Pyramid. But yes, uh, Pod is an option, which is where Christo seems to be headed right now. Uh, that's one that you would prefer to maybe route in once you have the mirror, and you can do Pod Eastern all at once. Right. Uh, but uh, routing doesn't always allow that. The Daddy Gamer's finishing up his Agra fight, getting his kin of Samaria. Wow, so neither runner has a glove at all. Fascinating. Yep, that was our barrier to Dark World access, so uh, clearly the seed not really uh, keen to hand those out right now.
So I haven't had actually had time to look at the spoiler log at all, so I'm in the dark as much as chat is. But I wouldn't be surprised if Glove was it here in Pod. Yeah, especially once they already have flute. Um, you're always pretty close to Pod once you have uh, flute and hammer. Um, so there, there definitely seems to be some reason why they want to head in here right away. Chris is always picking up all the keys he needs before going to left side. Or right side, bow lock side. Christos grabbing the big key off the right side there, and then appears to be headed straight toward Helmosaur. Yes. Gonna pick up all those nice arrow drops. Get a full uh, quiver going there. So Daddy Gamers is headed back toward the back of Pod at this point, where Christos is running right to uh, the boss. We'll see what Daddy Gamers is looking for. It might be an extra safety of some kind in the back. Uh, yeah, so there are no arrows on the... Uh, he has no arrows for right side, but yeah, there are uh, five arrows in the uh, Igor room so that you can uh, at least pick up the ones you need while you're in there. Right. Uh, Daddy Gamers did get another heart out of the dark basement there, which is uh, some nice added safety. Christus Owen takes down Hemelsar and gets the first crystal of the seed. Yeah, at the very least, the uh, seed has been pretty generous with those swords. Those are going to be uh, really helpful in these boss fights. And yeah, it seems like there was nothing but the crystal and pod. At least nothing that interested Christus Owen. Yeah, I'm, I admit, uh, chat, I'm agree with, agreeing with you on this one. I'm not sure why the runners are doing pod at this point, um, since uh, they will have to get mirror eventually for Swamp Palace, so it is accessible somewhere in the seed. Um, so you could always come back and do uh, Palace of Darkness and Eastern Palace at the same time. But uh, at any rate, Christos Owen has his first crystal of the seed and is going to go ahead and hookshot across the river um, and uh, head over to West Dark World. Meanwhile, the Daddy Gamers has finished his search through the back of Pod and is now going to face off against the Igors. Should be picking up arrows in that pot. There we go. Needs to be um needs to be careful with those. Okay. Oh. 
that's really unfortunate. Uh, yeah, those those green Igors could be killed with a with the tempered sword. Yeah. Uh, so probably wanted to save the arrows for that red one. Definitely. So we'll have to head back in. Um, not sure if he's going to head to the right side directly or uh, look for some more arrows elsewhere in pod. Well, he doesn't have the big key, so he needs to get past that Igor to get the big key. In the meantime, Chris's Owen is jumping into Skull Woods. Maybe the glove's in here. Ah, there we go. Yeah, so of course you would uh, like to be here with the fire rod, but uh, yes, sometimes the seed won't let you do that. Oh, an arrow drop from that first Igor there. That will be very helpful. Yeah, and chat is um, correct. I misspoke. Those are not Igors, those are Mimics. Igors are the ones in Eastern Palace. Ah, yes, my bad too. And yeah, I, I messed it up, sorry. So, uh, speculating what uh, might have happened to TDG here in uh, Pod, that big key is in what's called the map chest in the spoiler log, uh, oh. which can be really easily confused with the compass chest, which is in the back of Palace of Darkness. Interesting, yeah, very possible. So Daddy Game is headed back to Helmosaur at this point. Christos Owen just grabbed that glove out of Skull Woods and is in Thieves Town right now. Well, there were the Titans, Mitz. All right, well, that confirms that Aga was uh, pretty darn required to get into the Dark World since both gloves were here. Indeed. TDG making his way to Hemlesar, Christos Owen making his way through Thieves Town. Yeah, Christos Owen making uh, quick work of Thieves Town here. Very nice timing on that dash out of the bomb room. And then nice phase two of Helmosaur from Daddy Gamers there managed to uh, release that sword spin uh, and uh, and hit Helmosaur, so uh, made quick work of that second phase to pick up his first crystal. Very nice. Chris is Owen doing very good, not, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not doing, you know, wow, my mind is blinking when I'm looking for out of habit. So many people, including myself, will check that cell chest just out of habit, even though you don't need to. And he just grabs the maiden and takes off. Muscle memory. Thank you, chat. Thank you. Yeah, it's so hard in a spoiler log race to not open chests. Like, it's just runs counter to everything that you uh, ever practice in Rando. And very nice blind fight on the script there from Christos Owen.
And yeah, uh, some runners will uh, write out at the very beginning during the uh, spoiler planning time of what chests they're actually going to check, what route they're going to take through a dungeon. Um, I never have time for that, so I always just have the uh, log for the particular dungeon open next to me while I'm running through it. Ooh, silvers! In the brewery. Yeah, very convenient location for those. Which just makes it all the more confusing why they both did pod first instead of coming straight over here. But... And Christos looks like he's headed toward the lumberjack tree. Uh, oh. was Aga double required? Uh, <laughs> let's see. Yeah, it was. There's Meyer Bombos. And we're going straight to Meyer with that. Yep, that is a uh, full clearable for us since we have that cane and uh, at least one fire source and the medallion now. Christos checking the medallion again. Just to be sure. Oh, oh and there's the fire rod. So, double dip of skull woods absolutely required. Not that it's the biggest though. Route double dipping the front of Skull Woods is a common play. Yeah, and uh, double dips of dungeons are not so bad when uh, you have that spoiler log and you can just go straight for the one chest that you need. Absolutely. Tatagamer is showing us our stun prize there of just a single rupee, unfortunately. Oh, dang. Chris is Owen making fast work of that room with the fire rod and sword beams. Yeah, getting all of those whiz robes in the first cycle before they disappear is so hard. Uh, that's a, a lot of practice in that room that he's showing off right there. So Christos hitting the switch on the left side of Meyer. And there's the big key. Oh. <laughs> that was nice. Sort of the Meyer version of Icebreaker, but without the Kinesomaria. Yes, yeah, that's another door state extension glitch. Uh, also very recently discovered and uh, put to good use there. Yeah, the uh, what's going on in the background there is that the game treats doors very differently to make sure that you can always move out of a doorway if you need to. Um, no matter what's in your way. So if you can uh, convince the game that you're in a doorway, even when you're not, you can make some weird things happen. <laughs> okay, and kicks the Samaria block. Chris is Owen showing off all the swag in Meyer right now.
Meanwhile, TDG is taking on blind. Two phases down, one to go. And very nicely navigated through that blind fight. Crystal's, Crystal's Owen choosing to use Cape and Tempered Sword strats, and uh, there go the servers. He's being careful of his arrow count. Yeah, opting to use those uh, NMG strats. I am told that if you're really good at it, the NMG strat is actually faster than the silver arrows. Uh, I am not good enough to be sure of that, but... <laughs> uh, okay, so roughly the same, uh, assuming uh, pretty much optimal movement on both. TDG going to pick up his Titan's Myth in Skull Wood since he did the two dungeons in reverse order as Christos Owen did. Christos Owen heading up Death Mountain and getting clobbered by the cabbages right now. Really yes. bad combo with that dead rock. This cabbage is, uh, very unfriendly, as it turns out. TDG giving us a full look at Skull Woods. And I was going to say, our runners did have Hookshot and Tempered Sword uh, when they were up on Death Mountain before. So, yeah, I was going to guess it probably wasn't a uh, Tower of Hera that we were looking at in this case. Uh, or else our runners could have done that much earlier. And there he finds the Titan's Mitts. Okay, good. TDG gets his key he needs to get back to the main entrance. Alright, Chris is someone going into Turtle Rock. Has everything he needs to clear it. Yeah, 36 minutes into a run feels pretty early to be in Turtle Rock, but uh, is pretty well equipped with that Tempered Sword. with the Samaria. What? Uh, that was, that was interesting. The, uh... Yeah. Samaria platform just, uh, kind of sat in the middle of the room there. But, uh, Christos gets the torches lit. And, uh, we'll keep on heading through Turtle Rock. To answer chat, TDG's timer includes the 15-minute study period. He started it when the um, uh, SRO time started. Chris's Owen started his time when the um, uh, game itself started. Very clean strats from uh, Christos Owen there, using the hook shot to uh, get some iframes and dodge those spike rollers. Uh, the NMG strat that you would normally do there, you do some damage boosting to get through, but uh, you have a lot more hearts in NMG than Christos has yeah, right now. Ow. 
Ouch. Oh, wow. Dodging skills on point. Yeah, Chain Chomps had it in for Christos there, but uh, they were denied. TDG going to the back of Escape gets the blue mail. Nice. And a piece of heart, which increases his full heart counter. Yeah, got another bottle off of the uh, out of Bonk Rocks as well. Um, so uh, just collecting a couple of safeties there. Yeah, I think that's a good idea, especially since he was already in the area to collect that Lumberjack item, which we sort of had to do as a one-off anyway. And that's a really important skill in the spoiler races, is you have the route you have to take. Uh, and then you want to keep an eye on any uh, safeties that might be along the way that you can pick up essentially for free along the path. And now TDG's doing Saha's Closet. Which contains the fourth bottle, this time with a fairy in it. Mm -hmm. So while Christmas Owen is nearing the end of Turtle Rock, TDG is entering Eastern Palace. Christos grabbing the book off of uh, Laser Bridge and nothing else. Oh, so close. So that could mean a tablet that we need that book for, or uh, if Mirror is in Desert, uh, we would need right. that book for Desert Palace entry. Daddy Gamer is going to head into Eastern Palace while he's in the area grabbing the uh, Sahasrila items. So and takes down trying to make slick and sweat. Yeah, that double spin in phase three of Trinex is uh, very smooth. Uh, I, every time I see somebody do that, I think that's the next thing on my list I have to practice, and I still haven't done it yet. the fourth crystal for Christos um, and let's see where he goes with that book uh, is headed to the desert area oh no vanilla entrance into desert palace The Daddy Gamers facing off against Armos Knights. Let's see if the mirror's in Desert Palace. Very clean silvers on Armos.
So if you ever need new in chat, the uh, spoiler format is uh, uh, that both runners get the spoiler log uh, for 15 minutes of study time before the actual racing starts, and then they can refer back to it uh, throughout the seed. So they know exactly where all the items are, uh, but that 15 minute uh, study time is not always the easiest to plan out your entire route. So uh, a lot of routing and rerouting on the fly as needed. Um, so I guess there's nothing worthwhile in the front of Desert Palace. Yep, we uh, appear to be beating Lanmo today for that green pendant. Uh, Crystal's also showing off a nice little uh, NMG strat there, getting the spin speed off of the stairs, or maybe hook speed, I didn't see which one it was. Uh, and then to make sure you don't fall off the ledge, you just do a quick pause buffer, because you need to switch to a fire source anyway. Um, so uh, that just helps you out in navigating that very quick run up between the Desert Palace entrances. Dang, that was smooth. Awesome Silver's fight with Lamolis from Christus Owen. Gets the green pendant and an arrow refill. Yeah, it's interesting that uh, Daddy Gamers has already been to Sahasrila's Closet and Eastern Palace um, without having done that green pendant first. Right. Uh, wait a second. Christos Owen is headed toward Ice Palace. Why are um, we going to Ice Palace? That's another pendant dungeon. Um. But, well, but he was just on Death Mountain. He didn't do Tower of Harrow while he was up there, so. Maybe it's not Pedestal? Yeah, that's very true. Um, but I guess why would he be doing desert right then if you were not going to turn in the green pendant immediately? Uh, yeah. So we will see. Uh, question in chat, can Christos do the new glitches? Uh, we've already seen him do one door state extension in Meyer, which is even the less common one. So uh, I'm willing to bet he is fairly practiced at Icebreaker. Yeah, there he goes, going to Icebreaker. In the meantime, TDG is making his way through Meyer, going to face off against Vitreus very soon. I swear, did, did Christos get that first try? I think he got that first try. Yes, uh, that was a very clean icebreaker from Christos. Uh, that was, uh, okay. I wish I could do that first try. Oops, did he forget something? Yeah, oh. just gonna have to grab this key, I think. Key. Daddy Gamer is making his way through Meyer. He is down to two hearts, which is a little bit scary. Yeah. Uh, but does have those silver arrows for Vitreus, so. Alright, Christos Owen has skipped pretty much every single chest. He's just going straight to Cold Stair. So either the item's on Cold Stair, or this is a pendant play. Ooh, half a heart for TDG. Uh, does have that fairy in a bottle, though, that he picked oh, up? Oh, yes, so. that's true. Yeah, sure, I forgot about that. Ooh, skip 
the lightning. Did the lightning bolt knock that arrow away? I have never seen that happen before. Also, uh, Chris Owen really nailing that cold stare fight. Uh, get those gets those puffs up in a corner and uh, does not let them escape. And there was nothing in Ice Palace but the pendant. Both runners saving and critting same time. Uh, so yeah, if this is a uh, pendant uh, or a pedestal play, uh, Christos Owen will have to head back up the mountain to get to Tower of Hera, which yeah He's I think could have. Activated. Let's see. Okay, yeah, back up the mountain. I have to say I'm a little confused. Yeah, so I think this is where the 15-minute uh, time limit comes into play. Uh, well, it always comes into play when you're of routing course. a spoiler seed. But uh, this was a monstrous seed to route. If it does turn into an Aga and Pedestal required seed, oh my um, that's just so brutal to figure out exactly where you're going in the right amount of time. So things like, uh, you know, forgetting that you should do Hera before Turtle Rock when you're really uh, focused in on getting that book out of Turtle Rock uh, are really understandable mistakes to make. Yeah. And especially made all the more um, worse when you don't have the mirror. Which, you know, you would kind of expect to have at this point, especially in a spoiler race. Yeah, there are so many requirements like that, like, you know, oh, I need a glove to do this particular check, you know, to do Spike Cave, uh, and things like that that can sort of come up to bite you, because you would just never ch uh, make those checks so early on in a regular run. So, uh, yeah, you might have just sort of spaced a little bit on not having the mirror, and very nice spin speed set up for Heropod there. Apparently there was nothing in Pa, and I'm sorry, nothing in Hera. Went straight up to Moldorm, took down Moldorm, got the shovel, and that's the third pendant. Yep, so uh, three very quick go moded pendant dungeons from Christos Owen can pretty much only mean one thing at this point. Yeah. Meanwhile, TDG is also in Tower of Hera and gets the Hera Pot clip with the bomb setup. And Moldor knocks TDG off the platform. Alright, let's see what's on the pedestal. Oh, okay. <laughs> Did Twitch chat make this seed? <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, okay, good point from chat. If chat were responsible for the seed, it would be powder to mushroom to mirror, but pretty close. Maybe a shovel in there, too. So TDG has got his Hera done before heading into Turtle Rock now. Yeah, so, so this was this is an all dungeon seat. You had to do Aga for Dark Road access, and you had to do the pendant dungeons to get the mirror off the pedestal. Wow.
And yeah, in a uh, non-spoiler race of this seed, you would probably see the runners clear just about every dungeon uh, before finally checking that... Uh, every dungeon they possibly could except Swamp Palace before finally checking that pedestal for Mirror. I also want to make a quick PSA about how the uh, randomizer itself works. Uh, it actually selects the pendants and crystals first, and then places the items. So it's not like the, uh, you know, it placed the mirror and then placed the book where it did, and so then it had to place the pendants in those particular spots. No, it chose the crystals and pendants and then just randomly put that awful sequence of items together. I looked away to take a drink of water and almost was gone. Just not there. Yeah, silver arrows will do that. So question in chat about what a uh, spoiler race is. Uh, yeah, unlike a normal rando race, uh, our runners are actually not running this blind. They have a copy of the spoiler log, so they know where all the items are. And they had a 15 minute study period to uh, look at it beforehand before they actually started racing. Oh, that mirror was go mode, wasn't it? Uh, yes, I believe it was. Okay. Owen gonna dash to finish up Skull Woods, then go Swamp Palace, then GT. Not much further left for him. TDG's in Turtle Rock. Gonna get his book and beat Trinix. Yeah, it is all pretty much go mode dungeons from here on out for both of our runners. Uh, since uh, not much left that they will need to collect to finish the seed, except for that uh, mirror for TDG. Uh, I believe if you uh, go to the Discord for this particular tournament, I believe they are archiving all of the uh, permalinks for these seeds uh, so that uh, everybody can go uh, run them themselves or inflict them upon friends in this one's case. And Mothula went down super fast. TDG grabbing the Butter Sword out of the Turtle Rock big chest there. Oh, nice. Christos, I'm uh, skip that one. And uh, this is a good time also to uh, give a shout out to both of our runners. Uh, they're putting up with this uh, miserable, miserable seed to put on a great race for us. Uh, so be sure to give both of them a follow. Uh, also, I want to thank you to our uh, tracker in the background, Mia Lee.
First it's Owen diving into Swamp Palace, his final dungeon. Another nice swag strat, the cane dash there to get through the uh, switch maze for daddy gamers. Butter Sword makes really quick work of Trinix's heads. I'm sure, there's a pun to be made there about a butter knife through hot, but uh, <laughs> it's too early for me to actually figure it out. TDG gets his fifth crystal. Still needs to do Desert Palace and Ice Palace to get the two pendants he needs to get the mirror off the pedestal. And Crystal showing us all the new glitches there with the uh, bomb set up for a diver down. Uh, that one's about uh, the layers in Swamp Palace and how weird they are. But uh, if you can flip through that rail, you can just kind of walk across the water because why not? Yeah, I believe what it is actually in that one is that the so the water layer and the walking layer are two different layers of uh, animation. And normally you transition between the layers when you go down the stairs. Uh, so if you can just find a way to get into the water area without going down the stairs, you just skip that animation. Or skip that layer transition, rather. Right. And Christos just missing that zero cycle Argus. Uh, getting in the uh, poke dash weird glitch state. I'm not sure exactly what it's called. Uh, and uh, just kind of killing those puffs by holding out the uh, tempered sword. It's a very hard trick to do. That's one of the absolute hardest things in this game. So Christos Owen has completed his uh, seventh crystal and is now just headed back up to Ganon's Tower. Of course, the uh, GT Big Key guessing game is uh, a little bit wonky in a spoiler race, so if you would care to guess a location instead of a number in chat, uh, we can get an unofficial guessing game going. Into GT we go. First up, looks like Hope Room. Oh, okay, well, there you go. 
So uh, shout outs to uh, Shady, I believe, Shady Force Games, who was the uh, first one to guess that uh, Hope Room right. Well done. And Christos just needs to uh, steal that key from the left hand side uh, to be able to uh, make that climb. So very fast GT at the end of the seat. I hope you like GT because, you know, you got about one minute of it and that was it. Into the gauntlet now. Those mimics didn't stand a chance. And if you uh, want another look at Icebreaker, you'll see that here in just a second from Daddy Gamers. That Gauntlet 3 strat, uh, that's just really strong ex execution from Christos there. To be able to react yeah. to where the Zazaks are going and then dash left just above the Beamos on the conveyor belt, uh, again, that's just a lot of time and effort put into practicing that and showing off uh, the skill that he has earned. TDG gets the icebreaker. Yeah, and showing off some good uh, comfort with the with the strat there. Uh, there's a there's a point in the setup where you have to tap one frame of left input, um, and if you do a little bit too much, you can check uh, whether you are uh, actually in the right spot or not, and save the Samaria block and not have to reclaim it. So, uh, very nicely done from Daddy Gamers there. That mini Helma room was also very nice, uh, killing them with the spin and then immediately dashing left to grab the key. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, did Chris's Owen get through Gauntlet in like two minutes? Uh, this has been a uh, an extremely fast GT climb. Yeah. Daddy Gamer is also not letting Cold stare out of the corner, catching that one stray puff with a fire rod shot. <laughs> and the Aghanim's just lining up like rockets there for uh, Christos. And with that pendant from Daddy Gamer, he now has all three, if I'm not mistaken. Nice three cycle Aga 2 fight from Christos Owen and will drop into this Ganon fight. Oh, 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 oh,
Get to phase one real fast, into phase two. Oh! Fire bats, phase two, I hate phase two so much. Yeah, stuck in that corner, uh, you can uh, hit Ganon really easily because you don't go very far in the knockback, but that means you are also in extremely close proximity to uh, those fire bats. Uh, and once again, this is what uh, spoiler seeds do, is they just kind of, you know, encourage you to do this at a low percent, if at all possible. Um, and so, yeah, you just wind up with no margin for error in these tough late game fights. Right. This phase two going much better. Already through it. And now on to phase four with those silver arrows lining up for the torch glitch. Uh, actually not going for it. Sometimes that's better with silvers <coughs> yeah. since you can control Ganon a bit better, but... Yeah, there we go. Ganon is down. All Krista someone has to do now is go across that bridge. And GG. Finishes with an official SRL time of 1.25.05, which includes that 15-minute study period. So, 1 hour, 10 minutes, and 5 seconds after the spoiler log study time. Really just a tremendous display of execution from Christos Owen there. Uh, normally, you're, yeah, normally, you're aiming for, like, sub-hour... Uh, if at all possible, in a spoiler seed, uh, but that's if you you know don't have to do every single dungeon in the game. Yeah. So a one ten all dungeons run is very well done. TDG heading into the back of Skull Woods to face Mathula. And we will see if we can get uh, Christos Owen into chat with us here uh, for an interview about that seed. I'm sure he wants to complain about it just a little bit. <laughs> yes, this is a best of one. Um, uh, each week, the uh, sorry, the spoiler tournament is doing a Swiss setup. So the winners of this week will face off against each other and the runners up will face off against each other all next week and just keep going on like that as the score is even out And Mothula goes down on TDG's side. All he has left is Swamp Palace. And I believe from the SRO room that we'll get uh, an official forfeit there from Daddy Gamers after that uh, after that Mothula fight. He might go ahead and uh, finish out the seed. We'll see. But So it looks like Daddy Gamers is going to go ahead and uh, at least work on finishing this one out.
And we are joined in chat in chat by Christos Owen. GGs. Hello, GGs. <laughs> what did you guys think watching? Well, that? that was excellent execution. I'm watching your boss battles and your glitch performance, and I'm like, I need to take notes and watch that on replay numerous times to learn. Thank you. Yeah, I feel like execution was pretty decent actually for a lot of it. Um, the Ganon death was a unfortunate way to end. Would have been a otherwise pretty pretty solid execution run, but hey, it happened. Yeah, it, it's phase two. Fire bats are phase two. Are always nasty. One question we did have watching: what? Why the early pod dip? Uh, yeah, that was definitely not optimal. But I was I needed time. I was buying myself time um, to work out some other things. Um, Fair enough. This was a really difficult and long seed to root, um, just because it was all dungeons, but it took a couple of minutes for me to work out that it was all dungeons based on... Um, like, I didn't do Control F Mirror for quite a while. It's one of the last items I look up. Um, so I'd already, like, started thinking about my starting route. Um, and, like, the items I needed, and then I was like, oh no, I need the Mirror, that's some pedestal, it's all dungeons, and both gloves being in Dark World. It was just... Yeah, it was long. So when I actually got to the Dark World, my note said, uh, save, quit, go into Village of Outcasts. And I was like, well, I can't do that. I don't have a glove yet. So I was like, uh, what do I do? I was just like, I'll just go beat Pod by time to find out what I need to do. And I was like, all right, yeah, I just hookshot over the gap. It's pretty obvious. Um, but panicked a little. Um, a few Makes mistakes sense. in the routing, though. That being one, um, I should have beaten Hera while I was up on Death Mountain. Way earlier. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, that was yeah. And I, my opening route, I liked it, and I'm unsure whether delaying getting the, the boots that were so easily accessible for a few minutes was better or worse. Um, I wanted to get a bottle before getting to Kakariko, so I could pick up the flute and activate it immediately, the first trip there. But it meant I did like the whole south loop without boots so i don't know which was quicker yeah you were pretty even uh fluting up to uh death mountain after having finished uh the south shore and kakariko checks that you needed to um the one thing i saw at the beginning of the race was there was actually a bottle in pegasus rocks so i'm not sure if it would have been worthwhile to grab the boots hit the bottle and then finish out kakariko and activate the flute right then okay that probably would have been a lot better actually yeah um, I kind of just saw the bot because I had to go to Waterfall Cave anyway for the hookshot, and there was a bottle next to it. And as soon as I saw that, I kind of just made the decision, that's the bottle I'm getting. Didn't even bother looking for other bottles. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't know one was in the bunk rocks. That would have been a good idea. And yeah, as you said, I mean, this was just such a miserable seed to, to route uh, with the Aga and Pedestal going on that it's uh, it's really impossible to look for absolutely everything you want to know about a seed going in. Yeah, exactly that. I um I only finished routing with like 90 seconds to spare. And at that point I hadn't um, done any of my dungeon routing. So I hadn't noted where the big keys were, small keys. And kind of my rupee route and bomb and arrow route was pretty sketchy at the start. Um, I grabbed a 300 chest from Blind's uh, hut in the back just for safety because I did a practice seed yesterday and ended up being low on rupees for pod. So I was just like, I don't know if I'm going to get 100 uh, from all the other stuff I'm doing. I'm just going to get this 300 and waste uh, 30 seconds or whatever. Also grabbed a cape and a couple of hearts for safety. Um, but otherwise, skipped the mail, skipped the butter sword. Didn't even look up where Brian was, actually. I'm not sure what that is. Um, yeah, it yeah. is yeah, a long seed, fun, fun seed to have the spoiler log for. Definitely one I would absolutely hate had I had to play this without a spoiler. Right? Yeah, at least there was uh, there were a couple of generous moments. Uh, convenient GT big key, and at least the swords were not an issue throughout. But uh, yeah, other than that, even the Aga blue balls were uh, pretty rough. 
I was awful. I didn't actually count, but I was like, oh my god, this is like five or six rounds. It must have been like ten or above, I think. It, felt it, like it was nine, I believe. Ooh, okay, okay. Nine blue balls. Yeah, nine blue balls. Welcome to the Daddy Gamers. Um, officially forfeiting. Good race. Good race. Uh, 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 dude, dude, dude. Who who coded this game? Who worked on this thing? Hey, just blame VTOP, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so I saw the mirror on Ped during the spoiler log portion, portion, I said, I don't need that. And then after doing Pod and Eastern, I saw that Swamp was Crystal. Oops. Right. Shut up. Definitely could have comboed that better. I don't think it would have made a difference, to be honest, but. Um, yeah, we were just talking about that. Uh, Christos also did uh, pod a little bit early, um, basically to buy a little bit of time to look at the spoiler log some more uh, after getting into the dark world. So yeah, both of you were there, and we weren't quite sure why. But yeah, this was such a uh, an incredibly tough seed to route um, that that you're ne you're never going to do this one perfectly in the 15 minutes that you have. This was this was just as bad as a spoiler seed can get, just about. I mean, it's just, well, it, it it just awful. Um, I mean, even even at the end when I was going, I was like, "Oh, okay, all right, I'll I'll combo mirror and skull woods." And it's like, "Nope, can't can't do that because because I need the mirror to combo that. I can't. I need the mirror." So yeah, it just uh, it was awful. Yeah, I'm and not, even not having... sorry, go on. I was just going to say, even the book in Turtle Rock, like sort of the worst place it could be, uh, if it were anywhere else, it wouldn't have seemed so bad to have to do all those pendant dungeons. But diving Turtle Rock just for the book is uh, very annoying. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, even still, if you, if you routed this, not even perfectly. I mean, I think, what is it? A minimum of three trips to Death Mountain, right? One, once for the Pearl, once for the book, and then... GT. Yeah, you could have done it in three if you beat Hera on either of your other trips up there, which I didn't do. Yeah. Some stupid... Oh, so you made four trips? Yes, yeah. I forgot oh. to beat Hera or when I went to go to Turtle Rock. And then, because I was just like, oh, I'll just do the dungeon clear outs right at the end. And then I was like, oh, yeah, but I still don't have the mirror, so I could have run around <laughs> again. Oh, uh, that's. Yeah, unfortunately, I. I didn't do it the first time, but when I went up to Death Mountain the second time, when I knew, oh, I need the book to get into the desert, I remembered, all right, do Tower of Harawam here. So I would have done three trips, but I stopped after two. And honestly, having Mera on the pad kind of sucks because Mera is so helpful with routing light and dark world stuff together and just makes dungeons a lot easier. So. And not having that the whole game. <laughs> it's really bad. Yeah, I noticed. Beat, so. No, I noticed how many times I had to save and quit just to get back to the light world and flute. Like, it's it's amazing how much the mirror helps with something like that. Because uh, you can't navigate the dark world really efficiently. Yeah, and things like that Hera play that you uh, you know are used to. If you want to do Turtle Rock and Hera at the same time, you just mirror after you finish Turtle Rock, right? But uh, yeah, not having the mirror throughout the whole seat is uh, just slows you down in unexpected ways. And that's another thing. I I almost went into the Dark World to do uh, Turtle Rock first, and fortunately, I like I remembered. Wait, wait, you can't get back to the Light World easily. Go do Tower of Hera first. So it looked out there, but. Yeah. Uh, what was your opening route out of interest? It was just quite a fun. Like, there was so, a few options. Yeah, so I made a bullet for uh, Kakariko and did. Uh, I got the boots. I wanted those boots, um, and I got the lamp off library. Um, I got the sword uh, in Kak. I actually forgot the, the second one out of Blindsight. I wound up going back for that at another time. Um, and then save and quit to Link's house to get. Uh, I went to the dam, got the bow and the uh, cape just for safeties. Did ice ride cave? Skipped a uh, mini molder. Did ice ride cave 
for what was I shrieking? Oh, flippers. Um, and then I um, I did the the not the fake flipper glitch, but the uh, what do you call it? Uh, no, water, water walk. Water walk. Water walk glitch. So I looped in hobo. Did um, got the hammer. Went up to waterfall fairy to get a bottle and. Uh, what else was in Waterfall? Oh, uh, bottle and the hook shot. Um, so I could go back to Sick Kid and get the flute. Went back to Sick Kid and got the flute to make running around easier. Thinking I was never going to get the mirror and I needed a fast way to get around with the boots and the flute. And then I started, um, then I started dungeon clearing. So I went and did Aga 1. Um, and then went to Pod. So Pod was my first dungeon. And I spent so much time running around there because apparently I don't know which chest is the map chest. I, uh, I okay. like I realized halfway through, I'm like, wait, this is just a pure right side, like big key, small key, and you're done. And I practically full cleared it. Um, oh wow, yeah, that's quite a time time loss actually. That sucks. Yeah, I mean that's I mean, what like maybe three three and a half minutes um, when you're routing it efficiently. So anyway, so yeah, so I did pod. Um, Saving quit to go back to the light world. Did Eastern. Just figured I'd get that out of the way. Thinking I'm going to get the mirror. And that's when I realized, oh my gosh. Like, I need the mirror. And I could have done this so much faster. And then I had to figure out like, how to route that in better. And Because when I saw, I saw a book on TR, Blazer Bridge, and I thought, oh, thank God we don't need that for the mirror. <laughs> that we did. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. What, was, what was yours? What was your opener? Um, so I wanted to have the bottle before going into Kakariko. Um, but after hearing what you did and uh, making use of water walk to do all the water stuff, I definitely think that was the better thing. So I actually went to un Uncle first to get 10 bombs and then did escape with bombs to get a sword and uh, the ice rod. And then did South Shore, did the dam to get the bow and the cape, and then went to Ice Rod Cave Flippers. And then got the hammer from Hobo, waterfall cave for hookshot and bottle, and then went to Kakariko and got my other two swords, the boots, the lamp, the flute, and then uh, went up from there. Okay, yeah, I forgot. I did, I did dip um, Hyrule Castle uh, before um, doing Aga for tempered, so I had tempered for most of the game. Before yeah, yeah, I think your route was definitely more efficient. Actually, you delayed that until you needed to do it with Aghanim and had the boots and did the wall. Yeah, that was, I think that was definitely better. That was nice. That was good. Yeah. Made a whole lot of difference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was, again, just a just a miserable seed to route. So GG's to both of you. And uh, thank you for uh, being willing to put up with this misery. Uh, it was a really fun race to watch. So thanks. Thanks. Thanks, for, guys. thanks for commentating. Thank you to the trackers. Thank you for putting this on. Good luck for the rest of your games in the Swiss round. You too. Thank you. GG. And speaking of games, later on today at 4.15 p.m. on Speed Gaming 2, we have Gerdo versus Moogle Charm. And on Speed Gaming at the same time, Freda versus T214. And then at 11.15 p.m. on Speed Gaming 2, we have James FNX versus Ohado. And on Speed Gaming 3, at the same time, This Is Not Yoho versus Anorax 10. That's going to be the races for today. Want to thank Mia Lee, I hope I said that right, for tracking for us. Did an awesome job. And thank you, Cool Papa Bell, for commentating. Any final words uh, for this match? Nothing really for me yet. Just uh, everybody keep an eye on the uh, spoiler tournament schedule. If you have uh, enjoyed what you were watching, this is a really fun mode to watch. So uh, keep your eye on the tournament. We've got six weeks and a couple days of, uh, of the Swiss left. Then we get into brackets. So plenty of great spoiler action still coming down the line. And with that, thank you so much for watching, everybody. Hope you had a great time. Have a fantastic day.